The world falls into chaos. Everyone freaks out. These events are all connected. They arise from a systemic shift. This podcast explores this new normal and imagines potential solutions. My name is Dan Feldman, the host of Agile and Beyond. In this episode, I talk about the escalation of climate change. Climate change approaches ever faster. 97% of scientists agree that there is global warming. The Koch brothers and other corporate front groups spread disinformation by Congress and the Senate Environment Committee in order to block any bills attempting to deal with environmental destruction. The landmark 1972 study, The Limits of Growth, showed that we would eventually reach a breaking point. An internal 1988 report showed that Shell Oil knew greenhouse gas emissions could produce up to 3.5 degrees Celsius of warming above the 1750 pre-industrial baseline and that global warming was, quote, mainly due to fossil fuel burning. Scientists at Shell documented that climate change could create significant changes to the environment and lead to major social, political, and economic changes. 30 years ago, Shell feared that public opinion could push against fossil fuels and favor renewables if the public truly understood the gravity of climate change. In 1989, Noel Brown of the UN Environment Program said that we had just 10 years to solve the greenhouse effect before it goes beyond control. In those 10 years, we set records on carbon dioxide emissions. In 1990, the UN Advisory on Greenhouse Gases stated, beyond one degree Celsius may elicit rapid, unpredictable, and nonlinear responses that could lead to extensive ecosystem damage. First point, nonlinear responses are self-reinforcing feedback loops. These responses get bigger and faster until they spin out of control. Second point, and very critical, this could lead to extensive ecosystem damage. Each organism, including us Homo sapiens, has a place or environment in which it thrives. As an organism's natural habitat deteriorates, it moves into survival mode until it eventually dies. There is no alternative to Earth. In 2014, David Spratt, a policy analyst, stated that the Earth can only maintain living habitats if the temperature does not exceed 0.5 Celsius above the pre-industrial baseline. In 2016, the planet exceeded one degree Celsius above the baseline. Our complex societies overshoot ecological limits dramatically. The Earth cannot sustain consumer societies. Some are saying that the collapse of civilization is a near certainty within decades. Other scientists, like Guy McPherson, say that ecosystems could collapse within just one to four years. The conservative business-as-usual assessments from peer-reviewed journals over the past decade have become increasingly dire with each year, and these do not even include the self-reinforcing feedback loops. In May of 2014, the International Energy Agency predicted a global average of up to 6 degrees Celsius by 2050. These estimates do not include the effects of global dimming or the Arctic methane time bomb due to thawing Arctic permafrost. On November 8, 2016, a World Meteorological Organization report published a grim analysis of the state of the environment and the likely prospects. We are coming perilously close to the tipping point. The previous five years, 2011 to 2015, were the hottest on record. Data showed that 2016's average global temperatures were approximately 1.2 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels. In 2017, two reports showed that oil giants Shell and BP planned for global temperatures to rise as much as 5 degrees Celsius by the middle of the century, despite publicly backing the Paris Climate Agreement with a commitment to remain below 2 degrees Celsius. Today, both Shell and BP still plan for 97% 
or more of their investments to be in fossil fuels. 30 years of industrial propaganda have benefited the oil behemoths spectacularly. Environmental breakdown is accelerating worldwide. The daily emissions of carbon dioxide in Indonesia from the burning of forests for palm oil plantations exceeds the emissions of the entire U.S. economy. Raising beef is particularly destructive, both from tropical deforestation and methane release. Soil depletion has destroyed one-third of all arable land. Only 60 harvests remain. Humans consume natural resources currently at 1.5 times the Earth's ability to regenerate them. Insectageddon, the elimination of rainforests, mangroves, soil, and aquifers, and the degradation of entire Earth systems, such as the atmosphere and oceans, advance at bewildering rates. We are in the midst of the sixth mass extinction. The planet has lost nearly two-thirds of all vertebrates since 1970. This biological annihilation underlines a serious threat to humanity, states ecologist Gerardo Ceballos in the peer-reviewed journal National Academy of Science. Consistent with the previous five mass extinctions, he writes, Life would take many millions of years to recover and our species itself would likely disappear early on. He concludes that all signs point to ever more assaults on biodiversity, painting a dismal picture of life, including human life. The Arctic system as a whole charges full speed toward a precarious new state. Freakishly warm Arctic weather has scientists reconsidering worst-case scenarios on climate change. Nonlinear factors carry us rapidly into a new normal, and the chances of stopping it already seem unlikely. In just nine years, several combined feedbacks could raise the global temperature 10 degrees Celsius above the pre-industrial levels. The unexpected rapid melting of polar ice reduces the cooling effect of solar rays reflecting off of ice, and accelerates the grim effects of global warming. The melting of ice from Greenland and the huge Antarctic glaciers adds vast amounts of fresh water to the North Atlantic, raising sea levels. In 2016, striking surface warming had reduced Arctic sea ice over the prior five years by 28% below the average of the previous 29 years. Surface temperatures in parts of the Arctic were more than 10 degrees Celsius above normal in October, and sea ice ex extent growth remained the slowest on record. The overall trajectory is clear, Mark Cereza, director of the National Snow and Ice Data Center in Boulder, Colorado, said. Sometime in the next few decades, maybe as early as 2030, we'll wake up to a September with no Arctic sea ice. End quote. The last time the Arctic was ice-free in the summer was 4 million years ago. We modern humans emerged just 200,000 years ago. When the colossal Arctic ice cube melts in the ocean, the planet will experience an abrupt rise in global temperature. The equalizing of the temperatures between the Arctic and the equator alters currents, pulling warmer air into the Arctic. The Atlantic Ocean's Gulf Stream has weakened dramatically in recent years and could be headed for a collapse. Prevailing ocean currents have weakened by about 15% since 1950. The journal Nature reports that the weakened current will bring extreme winters to Western Europe, accelerate sea level rise in the eastern United States, and create catastrophic floods and droughts. Coastal cities such as Miami could be washed away in the near future. The frozen Arctic soil holds a carbon time bomb. As warmer temperatures melt the permafrost, methane escapes from the seafloor into the atmosphere. A sudden burst of methane can have dire consequences. When initially released, methane is about 100 times more potent than carbon dioxide. 
A large release of methane could trigger a dangerous climate feedback loop, exacerbating global warming and causing even more gas to be released as a result. Because carbon emissions have their greatest impact 10 years later, we have yet to feel the effects. Because the Arctic warms much faster than the remainder of the planet, we humans have found ourselves severely unprepared. In 2016, temperatures at the North Pole were eight times higher than the average temperature increases across the globe, and parts of the Antarctic were 20 degrees Celsius higher than they were between the years 1979 and 2000. In parts of Arctic Russia, temperatures have been 6 degrees Celsius to 7 degrees Celsius above the long-term average. Many other Arctic and subarctic regions in Russia, Alaska, and Northwest Canada were at least 3 degrees Celsius above average. Historically, scientists have measured temperature changes here in fractions of a degree. This is a sobering new normal. The Arctic News blog warned in 2016 that, quote, Within just one decade, the combined impact of extreme weather, falls in soil quality and air quality, habitat loss, and shortages of food, water, shelter, and just about all the basic things needed to sustain life, can threaten most, if not all, life on Earth with extinction. The climate reflects economic injustice. These interlocking crises will affect everyone. But the poorer nations that contribute the least to climate change are hurt first and worst. Population increases further aggravate the problem. The rapid industrialization of China during the past 30 years presents a troubling dilemma. As the living standards of the 1.38 billion Chinese have risen worldwide, carbon dioxide emissions have accelerated well beyond earlier predictions. Given India's size and population, its emissions of carbon dioxide is still relatively tiny. If its emissions track China's, there will be no turning back. Some claim that emptying half of the humans from Earth may be the only way to save the planet. Noam Chomsky makes the outrageous claim, his words, that the Republican Party is the most dangerous organization that has ever existed in the world. This organization has committed itself to destroying organized human life on Earth. Almost every Republican candidate has denied our acceleration towards environmental catastrophe. The Republican Congress rejected the Paris Conference commitments to keep the world below the tipping point. Since the withdrawal from the agreement, investments in the dirtiest fossil fuels have skyrocketed. This puts us on a course to a 3 to 4 degree increase in temperature well above the threshold to keep us within the climate safety zone. The U.S., the most powerful country that has ever existed, has sought to actively undermine the efforts to halt climate change. Trump's failure to act, in Stephen Hawking's words, could push the Earth over the brink to become like Venus with a temperature of 250 degrees and raining sulfuric acid. We suffer from a systemic crisis at the very heart of our 21st century economy. We are losing the planet, says the environmentalist James Gustav Speth. The current actions are grossly insufficient because the longer term negative trends continue nonstop. Something more profound and systemic is at play. The current system is simply incompatible with a sustainable, just and equitable future. The core features of the economic system speed up ecological overshoot. The environmental movement of the 1960s and early 1970s reached this consensus. If we intend to save our planet, we must address the nature, design, and implications of the system, specifically the extreme forms of corporate capitalism. Gross domestic product and national income accounts measure the wrong things. The result? The better the corporate line, the worse the health of the planet. The underlying structure of our political economic system works against equitable, sustainable solutions. The early environmentalists believed that the problem was the system itself. The system is extraordinarily unstable. Every three to seven years, it experiences an economic downturn. 
Every 20 to 30, there is a really bad one. Then if you look at the 1930s or the one we are still in that crashed in 2008, the instability is globally catastrophic. Under neoliberal capitalism, communities struggle constantly for economic stability. During times of economic decline, governments reduced ecological protections. Strong environmental legislation always accompanies economic stability. Economically successful regions have more effective environmental regulations and outcomes. Because economic downturns lead to environmental rollbacks, only economically sustainable communities can maintain their environmental gains. The recent U.S. election illustrates that negative political feedback loops can also destroy years of progress. Trump's cabinet appointments destroy anything of use to human beings. A signature goal of the U.S. administration, roll back environmental regulations. The president has already undone decades of environmental gains. He withdraws rules designed to fight climate change, coal ash pollution, and coastal flooding. The executive branch aims to make oil companies, power plants, and manufacturers more competitive by lowering their costs. The administration has systematically destroyed the integrity of the Environmental Protection Agency, torn up the Clean Power Plan, abolished environmental standards for motor vehicles, trimmed protections on public lands, and reversed the ban on chlorpyrifos, a pesticide now linked to the impairment of cognitive and behavioral function in children. Since the president took office, climate denial has increased in popularity. The system of corporate capitalism is in serious trouble. Long trends of growing inequality, of ecological destruction, reveal decisive flaws embedded deep in the design of the political economy itself. Climate change and other harmful trends to society and the ecosystems are the logical outcomes of the nature, values, and construction of our system. The system celebrates competitive self-interest and hyper-individualism while stigmatizing compassion and solidarity. Environmental problems reflect the defining features of our current political economy. Our ever-growing economy undermines the ability of the planet to sustain human and natural communities. Neoliberal ideology obstructs a collective public response to climate change. Their policies have permitted corporations to accumulate enormous profits and treat the atmosphere like a waste dump. Unregulated capitalism works to make the reduction of emissions culturally unimaginable. The ethos of neoliberalism makes every individual feel as if he or she is personally responsible for bearing the burden of potential ecological collapse. A failure of imagination that things can transform radically maintains the status quo. For many, it is far easier to envision the end of life on our planet than it is to envision the end of capitalism. And yet, throughout history, systems have changed, from the pharaohs to feudalism. We can only replace this virulent economic ideology through power and politics. Do not fall for the con job of neoliberalism. We cannot address climate change through our wallets. We must stop thinking as atomized individuals. Only mass movements can alter the response to the climate catastrophe. To subscribe and learn more, visit agileandbeyond.co.